1876. Queen Victoria has been declared Empress of India. Her British Empire stretches around the world. Within its borders, missionaries are busy converting formerly Muslim lands to Christianity. One young soul stands up for the defence of Islam from the obscure village of Gardian. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed salam, begins to write prolifically, first a number of articles, and then an entire book, The Magnificent Brahine Ahmadiyya. Now surely India's Muslims will unite around this inspirational book and join its author in the service of Islam. The state of the Muslims at the time, much, many of them, or I would say majority of them, uh, were not financially uh, well. And the, secondly, those that did have wealth, were, they did not really care much about the faith. So the Promised Messiah والسلام, approached these people and the res response from them which was very meager. And another such incident is of a famous Ahl Hadith scholar. His name was Nawab Siddiq Hassan Khan. He did not accept the book. The book was sent back with the note that because the book includes the refutation of a Christian faith, therefore it would upset the government. And that didn't really matter as he has, had rejected the book, but the way this book returned and it came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi it was ripped up. The Promised Messiah, it is stated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's face became red. And Huzur responded that, I do not need any support from you, or I do not expect any support from you. Rather, my support is from Allah the Almighty alone. And Huzur said, you may please your government. Wealthy Muslim leaders have ignored Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed salam's call for Islam. Now, even his family offer no support. The wife of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Qadir Sahib, she was very hostile. So, just like his brother, because she was the mistress of the house and she was taking care of all the things at that time, so she would not give anything to the Promised Messiah Islam. Even in his village of Qadian, um, not many people knew of him and he writes himself in fact in February 1903 of the Review of Religions that even people in my village never inquired about where I went or what I was going to do. The Promised Messiah Islam writes in Aina Kamalat Islam that he prayed fervently and continuously um, for God Almighty to grant him a helper and he states that, O oh Lord, I am alone and helpless. Grant me a helper and assistant. Meanwhile, halfway across India, in Jammu and Kashmir, a renowned Muslim scholar is debating an atheist. This great Muslim's name is Hazrat Hakim Nuruddin, radiallahu anhu. Atheist came to him and asked and he actually raised an allegation and uh, uh, his argument was that in the time, in the old times, prophets used to uh, make people fool by saying that Allah does speak to them. So he said that in this age of science and technology and in this age no one can make such a claim and people are not foolish in these days. Whilst they were having this debate um, Hazrat Hakim Mawlwi Nuruddin had requested for some medicines from the chemist. When the medicines were brought over, the wrapper that it, was, um, it, it came in was actually from a piece from Brahini Ahmadiyya, in which the Promised Messiah had written that he was a claimant of divine revelation and that anyone who wished to see signs for the truthfulness of Islam should come to visit him in Gardian. So Hazrat Hakim Mawlwi Nuruddin immediately asked for all of the parts of Brahini Ahmadiyya that were published at the time. And then he read all the Brahim Ahmadiyya parts at that time that was published. And he fell in love with the author and the, with the book. And then he called back the atheist as well and showed him Brahim Ahmadiyya and stated that this, in this day and age, in the age of science and, and knowledge, a person has claimed that God Almighty speaks to him and that he, they should go and visit Guardian and that the atheist should come with him. 
And so as soon as the, the atheist heard of this, he, he refused and actually left and fled. So Hazrat Hakim Malvi Nuruddin Nazilahwan immediately sets off to investigate and goes towards Qadian. And as he approached closer to Qadian, he describes his body suddenly trembling and a sense of anguish overcomes him. And he says, as a result, I begin to profusely pray. Anyhow, he enters Qadian and he asks the driver of his um, horse cart where the residence of Hazrat Nizor Ghulam Ahmed was. And he points him towards a man who was sitting beside a gate. And he said that when I look towards this man, um, a really strange sense of dismay and consternation overcame me. And frankly, he was disappointed. And he told his driver to stay behind because he expected to actually return back. Anyhow, he approaches this man who was beside the gate. And the man says, you know, um, where have you come from? And Clifton C. the first, as Allah says that in a very terse manner, I said, I've come from the hills. Then the man says, are you Nuruddin and have you come from Jammu state and have you come to meet Hazrat Mizah Ghulam Ahmed? And at this point, Clifton C. the first said that I was relieved that this wasn't the Mirza who I had come to see. And in actuality, that man was Mirza Imamuddin, who was an opponent of the promised Messiah, Ali Wasallam. Anyhow, he asked the man to point him towards the residence of the Promised Messiah and a message is sent to Hazrat Mizar Ghulam Muhammad the Promised Messiah who then says that Hakim Sahib can come and meet me after Asr. So the first time he sees him, he says that my heart testified that this was the Mirza who I had come to see and I would be ready to lay down my life for him. Meeting the Promised Messiah, Islam, Hazrat Khalif Tunsi, the first of the Allah one who wished to pledge allegiance to him. And um, the Promised Messiah, Islam, replied that he had not been commissioned by God Almighty to, to take any bet, i.e., the Pledge of Allegiance. But the Hazrat Hakim Nawali Nuruddin of the Allah one who wished to be the first person to, to pledge allegiance when that time arose. So the Promised Messiah Islam assured him. So one of the main struggles of the Promised Messiah Islam was finding the financial support um, in spreading Islam in his publications and getting them published. And the Muslims who actually saw Hazrat Mizar Ghulam Muhammad Islam as a solace, as the defender of Islam at that time, they were not giving the Promised Messiah Islam um, huge financial support. There was some support, but at times it was very low indeed. When Clifton C. the first Razilahwano came into the picture, he literally took this burden upon himself and he would always say to the Promised Messiah that I'm ready to sacrifice all my wealth for the service of Islam. And he did so. And a prime example of this is that the publication of the Promised Messiah's book is Allah Waham. And the Promised Messiah Islam himself mentions the name of Clifton C. the first as a person who has always, always backed him financially. But not just this, Clifton C. the first always would defend Islam as well. And whenever the Promised Messiah Islam would ask him to write something in support of Islam, he would do so. In fact, you know, he left his own um, country and came to live in Gardian at the request of the Promised Messiah Islam. A single page of Brahine Ahmadiyya, found purely by divine good fortune, has led Hazrat Hakim Nuruddin Razialahu Anhu to Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salam. But the very same book has ignited the jealousy of locals. In Brahim Amdiya, he, he made claim that God Almighty speaks today and that anyone who wishes to see the signs of the truthfulness of Islam and the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they should travel to Gardian and stay with him for a year. And provided they, they remain unbiased in their, in their approach, they will be shown signs by God Almighty. That is when people of other religions wrote letters to Hazrat Ahmad Islam requesting for a sign. Prophet Messiah decided to supplicate to God Almighty and he was 
in turn told that he should travel to Hoshiarpur and that's where he spent 40 days in seclusion and supplicated God Almighty for this magnificent sign. And as we know, he was vouchsafed the prophecy of the promised reformer, Hazrat Muslima. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed salam, asks his followers to pray the prophecy should soon be fulfilled. Ahmed salam, advances yet further. He publishes the green leaflet, defends his prophecy, and announces the very first Pledge of Allegiance, laying the foundations of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. In 1886 and 1889, the, it was a huge test for the Muslims who were supporting the Promised Messiah Islam. Muslims who saw the Promised Messiah as you know, the, the champion of Islam, the person who was defending Islam, the Holy Quran, the Holy Prophet وسلم, in the best manner. They were really tested by the Muslim al-Prophecy. But Hazrat Hakim Mawri Nuruddin Khalifnsi the first was an immovable rock of faith who always stayed close to the Promised Messiah and loyal to the Promised Messiah. And the promise that he wanted to be the first person to do bed remained. And when the Promised Messiah took bed in 1889, he was, of course, the first person who took bed, fulfilling his promise. Okay. 